produce regular product giveaways happening here on the Jeep Talk Show. Every month and sometimes every week, the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast will be giving you, the listener, a chance to win serious gear from major companies that you know, love, and trust. You want a chance to win tires, suspension components, maybe more? Listen every week for your chance to win big. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Next Entire USA, we got you. Found out more about ne- the tires that are on the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator, the Next Entire Rodian MTX at nextentireusa.com. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a Jeep, want a Jeep, or never do everything but Jeeps. This show is for you. Josh, Tammy, Wendy, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about... Jeeps! T-Bones. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you had a flashback didn't you <laughs> yeah for a second i was back in texas <laughs> how's it going jeeper i'm josh and on this episode of the jeep talk show i've got a connection between harvey weinstein and jeep wranglers you won't mm-hmm. believe and remember when all, remember when all those high dollar jeeps and dodges were stolen right from the plant yeah they got most of them back and a little something else to boot as well and later mm-hmm. i've got a must-have for all you doorless jeepers out there Well, howdy, it's Wendy, and on this episode, I'm sharing what to expect when you go on your first organized trail run. I'm Tammy, a.k.a. Jeep Mama, and later in the show, Hockey Fun Facts. Yes, I know, it's a Jeep podcast. Plus, I have a ticket for the new Jurassic World Dominion movie Friday night. I can't wait to see the real live dinosaur in the 4xE Jeep. Ooh. I'm Tony, and more importantly, the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator survived the second annual Jeep Talk Show off-road event. What a great time, and it was a great, and it was great meeting new listeners. Local Jeep news, national Jeep news, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. Are you saying that because I didn't get a chance to drive it this year? Is that the oh, only? Oh no! I was gonna, I, you know, I apologize <laughs> to Chuck because I said, Chuck, I'm sorry. You know, he was actually interested in getting a Gladiator before he got that Dodge Ram. Oh, and I didn't think about it. I was just just so busy doing it, and Josh was in and out of the Gladiator so much. I it, it didn't. It, I think we were done with the run before I thought about it, Josh. <laughs> yeah, I figured. You should have spoke up. Uh-huh, no, sure. it's it's, uh, it's entirely okay. I just didn't want to break anything again. <laughs> yeah, like, blamed oh, for I should have brought a stabilizer out there so you could have swapped uh-huh. it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good times. Good times indeed. Well, you heard me mention Harvey Weinstein, and there's not too many people out there who haven't at least heard his name. The former Hollywood movie producer is, of course, now in prison for some pretty heinous sex crimes. So... Why am I talking about sleazeball Hollywood-level gossip on a Jeep podcast? Well, this sleazy creepoid is actually suing FCA, Jeep's former parent company, now owned by Stellantis, over a crash that happened three years ago. Apparently, there is no statute of limitations on something like that. Weinstein is seeking $5 million in damages because he flipped his Jeep Wrangler while trying to avoid a deer. He claims that the accident which happened in Bedford, New York, about 40 miles north of Manhattan, left him catastrophically injured and rendered paralyzed with significant and continuing conscious pain and suffering from severe spine and back injuries. According to the complaint filed in a New York state court in Manhattan, Weinstein was wearing his seatbelt when the brakes on his 2017 Wrangler allegedly failed as he approached the deer, causing a rollover. It was the supposed brakes that failed that caused the crash. Couldn't Uh possibly have anything to do with your gross overreaction to jerk the wheel all the way to one direction or anything like that, right? No. No. And just in case you were curious why a creep like Harvey Weinstein had a Jeep Wrangler to begin with, well, it's because it was given to him Uh by Jeep so they could get some product placement in one of his films. Oh, for The I'm sure sleeps just fine at night lawyer for Weinstein is also trying hopelessly to dispute any multiple dispute multiple press reports that <laughs> well point to Harvey Boy being uninjured from said crash. The lawyer claims Weinstein told authorities that he was hurt at the time of the accident. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. 
Poor Weinstein is allegedly in constant debilitating pain because FCA prolonged negotiations after the crash to avoid a lawsuit. Something Too tells bad. me that so sad. Or, yes. Mm. <laughs> Something tells me that Harvey Weinstein is just pissed off that he has to go sleep on a prison bed that now stinks like tears, shame, and old baloney ass. The guy is now 70 years old and is serving a 23-year sentence for sexual assault and rape and probably misses his memory foam. His trials are not over yet either. He is still facing more lawsuits now in Los Angeles from the uh, from other alleged sex crimes from 2004 to 2013. Oh, but I'm sure he's a trustworthy guy. Definitely not the type that would have the motivation to pursue a frivolous lawsuit to pay for a mountain of legal fees. I am playing my violin. <laughs> yep, the same here. But it's the world's right. tiniest violin that you're playing. It is exactly, exactly tiny. <laughs> Fingers. Indeed. Oh my gosh. It's not is, even a is, is, there, is there a one finger violin? Because I want to use that one for Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> yeah. What a loser! I mean, you know what, dude? Oh, please. Just I accept just your fate work. and and just rot. Would you please? Yes, just exactly. He's stay a, in that yeah. hole that we put you in and and Let's rot. See. There was Disgusting. a word you used, sleazoid. That was good. I liked it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was trying perfect. to be nice and, and avoid you know you are, any but potential litigation or liable or whatever. So okay, yeah. well, well, I think it's only liable if it's untrue. <laughs> right. So, <Exactly>. yeah. <laughs> so this, I, th- I think you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, earlier, uh, as at the top of the show, I alluded that uh, you know there's a big uh, heist, well, more or less, that happened at the St- at some Stellantis plants recently, and. Uh, well, cue the bad boys song. Bad boys, bad boys. Bad boys. What you gonna what do? You gonna what, do? You what you gonna do when, when they come when for, they come for you? you? Yeah, exactly. That one. Back on episode 581, we talked about a story that is now all but swept under the rug. Apparently, several people in a gone in 60 seconds like raid stole high dollar and high performance vehicles from multiple Stellantis plants. Six figure Grand Wagoneers, 700 plus horsepower wide body Hellcat Chargers, $90,000 Trackhawk Jeep Grand Cherokees, and uh, really a nice Hellcat Challenger just to boot. This was no joke, and it was pulled off by one hell of a team with Hollywood level planning, intel, and sophistication. Did I mention this all happened in broad daylight? <laughs> yeah. So, fast forward to now, and the FBI has now charged four men in the connection of these crimes. FBI agents arrested Devin Rice, Hakeem Benjamin, and Lavelle Jones last week, all of whom live in the Cleveland area. A fourth su- suspect, Jalen Harris, has been charged as part of the same complaint, but has not yet been arrested and is presumed on the run. The group no faces surprise. Federal, yeah, the group faces federal charges, including robbery, mail theft, uh, transporting cars across state lines, and gun possession. The suspects will be tried for the crimes, which investigators allege involve several sophisticated schemes. The FBI claims that the suspects obtained several universal keys that are designed to open all of the blue mailboxes in a given geographical area. The suspects allegedly robbed postal workers at gunpoint in order to steal the keys, and one of the suspects told investigators that he even paid a postal service employee $1,000 for one of those keys. With that, investigators say that the men were able to steal mail from the mailboxes and use it to commit fraud. Several bank accounts were drained and checks were forged in order to be cashed at banks. The investigation supposedly got a break when police noticed a vehicle that was involved in the armed robbery of a mail carrier. They obtained a warrant and found a collection of mail keys and a number of bank deposits, uh, bank deposit slips rather, and a whole bunch of checks. This led them then to a location where some of the men supposedly lived. Another warrant was obtained and they found more stolen mail and paper used to print checks. Boy, it just gets deeper and deeper, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, while there, investigators claim that they also found stolen vehicles, which led them to link these mail crimes to a separate series of thefts involving the aforementioned Jeeps and Dodges. Now, police say that the thieves used something called a ProPad, which allowed them to copy key fob information to effectively trick the vehicles into opening and starting for them. One of the most insane parts of the story, aside from the outright gall and, of course, how they did it, was that despite some of the vehicles being worth in upwards of six figures... Some were sold for less than $10,000. Idiots. <laughs> One challenger allegedly went for as little as $3,500. Oh, my bucks. goodness. What? Oh. Yeah. A challenger for 3500 bucks straight out of the oh, back. Brand board. new. Can you imagine. He's, Most he's of the stolen Jeeps and Dodges have been found. Some were involved in high-speed chases, car crashes, and traffic stops. Others, meanwhile, were simply stashed around the Cleveland area. Altogether, between the high-dollar vehicles and the mail fraud, the thefts are estimated to tally upwards of $2.7 million. So I have a question. 
No, please. Obviously, these 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 guys don't really have any true smarts for selling vehicles way below their their value. But if they're this smart to plan this and to use technology and do all this stuff, why can't they work and get a normal job and be successful and help solve right, something? Right, because there's clearly a, a bit of a skill set here. You know, yes, I mean, exactly. it could be applied with some, you know, massaging and maybe a little bit of extra training. But nonetheless, you know, there's I, clearly I just, a skill set yeah. here that could be could be put to use. I just um, don't certainly get it. Not a lot common sense but but nonetheless right. that's different. Yeah. yeah you know and i would think that with the level of sophistication and 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 technology and everything involved that they would have a much more i don't know elaborate fencing operation but no yeah uh, well, i guess not the other thing that you're talking about is really they were committing the mail fraud and probably check fraud and that's what led them to this so the vehicles may well, not have even been found had these whoever was investigating the postal stuff and the you know right. checks and you're so right. If it wasn't kind of for one, they thing. may not have have uh, solved Correct. the other. Hundred percent right. And something tells me that uh, you know a lot of that mail fraud and stuff like that is what funded this operation. Uh, sure. I mean, you couldn't pull something like this off without having you know a little bit of uh, of you know cash in the kitty, as it were, uh, to to have some working capital to make something you know make some moves like that. So I mean, obviously, you know, there was some technology involved that needed to be purchased. Uh, software involved to to make it all happen, uh, and obviously some bribes in there as well to get the keys to get the ball rolling all to begin with. So, but two point seven million dollars in all of this. Nice. Something tells me that the uh, the amount of this is going to make sure that these guys stay in jail for a long time. Well, and the other thing I think that that Stellantis should be doing is making sure that that lot is protected a little better. You know. So yeah, I'm pretty sure like some that. some more security protocols have been put in place since uh, since yeah. all this. Well, I'm, I'm just guessing. That's uh, 2.7 million of sales that they did uh, because all they, they and they got the money back from the insurance company. So think of it that. Oh, way. hey, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, all right, now yeah. what do we do with these things? Yeah, I sell them used. <laughs> Well, hey, Jeeper, if you're out there and you're seeing headlines that we're not reporting on, you got a story that you think we should be talking about, well, let us know. You can do it by phone, phone or email. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how to reach out to us. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. And the 4x4 Radio Network is the only place on the web where you can find a whole bunch of great off-road podcasts all in one place, and it's all for free. Be sure to tell your friends. I know you know some people who, well, they're not into Jeeps per se. It's not their fault. It's okay. But we've got something for everybody over at 4x4radionetwork.com. That's the 4x4 Radio Network. Go check us out. We'll see you there. What? Where's the noob? Noob! 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 Hey, noobie! Noobie! Noob Nugget. It's time for Noobie Nuggets. So you finally decided to join a group on a trail run, and you might be wondering what you should expect on this run. Now, when you're deciding to join a run, the information about that run is important so you can determine whether this run fits your Jeep setup and your driving abilities. So I have some things that you may want to know before you go. The description of the run will list the date, time, and location of the meeting. Now, the meeting place could be the meetup, and then you drive to the trailhead, or it could be the actual start of the run. Either way, I suggest getting there ahead of the time listed. Most runs will list a meet time of 8 a.m. and leave at a time of 8.30 as an example. Most runs will leave on time, so don't be that one jeeper who's late. Now, two, once you arrive, if it's a club event or corporate event, you will need to sign a waiver. If it's just a group of people that get, get together and you're invited, you probably won't need to sign anything. Now, once you meet the trail leaders, they may ask about your setup and or ability in an effort to place you in the line for the greatest success. You also may be placed in the order you arrived. Either way, it's all going to be good. Now, you will need to air down. It's best to know what to air down to ahead of you arriving. Most Jeepers have differing opinions on how much to air down. For good info on airing down, you can check out my episode 431 and 452, and you can also watch Trails 411 YouTube videos to get some additional information. It really comes down to what trail you're going to be on and your brand of tire as to what you actually air down to. Now, about five minutes before the run starts, the leader will call a driver's meeting and review the trail difficulty and go over any rules of the run, like no drinking or making sure when there is a turn that you wait for the driver behind you to make sure that he or she sees you make the turn so they don't get separated from the group, and any other general information. They will also announce the radio frequency and, the, and or channel if you're using GMRS, and a brief idea of the time frame for lunch. 
Now, if the run is intermediate or difficult, they will likely discuss some of the possible obstacles coming up and let everyone know that they can ask for a spotter. Again, this is not a bad thing. It's a badge of honor, and don't be afraid to ask for help. And by the way, grown men can ask for help and directions. Now, once the driver's meeting is adjourned, it's off and running. Well, actually, it's back to your Jeep and away you go. You want to follow the Jeep in front of you close enough not to get lost, but not so close that you get pelted with rocks and gravel. Also, it's a good idea to turn your air recycle on to keep from filling your interior with road dust from the Jeep in front of you. Of course, if you're topless, you'll get what you get. Now, you also want to turn on your headlights. Now, the leader should always have most of their lights on, and this is better for the other drivers like side-by-sides and out-of-control people coming from the other direction to be seen easily. But everyone else's headlights are more easily seen in a rear view or side mirror with a click glance to make sure the Jeep behind you is still there. Now, without headlights, all Jeeps, yeah, I know, Tony, even the red Jeeps, become the same color as the dusty trail, making them harder to see you in the mirrors. You want to pay attention to the driver in front of you as they tackle obstacles, ruts, and gullies, and etc. Do you like their line? Would you make changes to their line for your Jeep or comfort? This is a great training ground for you to learn and feel comfortable with your Jeep. If there's an obstacle, get out and watch. It's the best way to gain knowledge. Now, at some point during the trip, the group will stop for lunch break. This can be the best part of the trip, in my opinion, depending on the destination. Sometimes the stops we've had are on the top of a mountain with forever views, or maybe it's a desert view that goes on for miles and miles. We've even had lunch many times sitting by a stream. I just love the places we stop. It's also a great time to chat with other drivers and sit around and enjoy the company of fellow Jeepers. You want to plan on packing chairs for each person in your Jeep. Some of the places we stop do offer rocks to sit on or tree stumps or things like that, but you may be better off with a chair. Folding or smaller chairs are generally better due to limited space in your Jeep. You will need a nice chest. It doesn't need to be the huge one like you would use for a week-long trip if this is just a day trip, but you do need to keep the food and beverages cold that you brought. You must also want to consider what you may need for the kids and the dog. And speaking of dogs, please leash your dogs. I am the biggest dog lover out there, but I hate when loose, out-of-control dogs get all in my business when I'm trying to enjoy my lunch. If you Jeep with your dog, please bring baggies to clean up after your dog. Just be prepared. Dogs will almost always do their business in the middle of the group setting while everyone's eating their lunch. Now, you also want to bring some extras for the kids that might include games and toys to keep the little ones busy. Another suggestion is to have a bag with items like paper towels, hand wipes, sunscreen, bug spray, hats, light jackets, any other extras you may want or need for the day. Extra water and snacks are always a good addition, too. It's really about making your trip comfortable for you. Now, after lunch, the group will continue on their way to the end of the run. And this is where you'll air up your tires. Hopefully, you've had an air, you have an air compressor or other equipment like a power tank to air up. If not, there's generally a fellow Jeeper who's willing to help you air back up. Airing up tools should be on your list of things to add to the Jeep as you start to venture out on trails. This is also a good time to do a quick check under your rig just to make sure you didn't leave any parts on the trail or dangling underneath your Jeep. And generally, once you're aired up, everybody pretty much heads out on their own. Now, I hope this will help you with your first organized run and what to expect when you show up. So, guys, do you have anything else that you would suggest for their first time run? I just have a suggestion you talked about to check your rig to make sure you don't have any dangling parts or anything. Tune yeah. in to the next episode of the Jeep Talk Show, and I will give you 12 tips on what you should check. Perfect. I like it. Josh, Good anything stuff. you want to add? I mean, you. I mean, there's always little, little things, you know, like uh, you know, maybe sure, you know, bring to, bring your snacks and and drinks and sunscreen and you know things like that. I mean, there's always going to be little things that you're going to forget or do you wish you would have brought or you wish you would have thought of or something like that. And honestly, it could be your first run or your hundred and first run. You're still <laughs> going to forget something. I don't always. care who you are. Yeah, <laughs> it's just going to happen. So I mean, lists are great and everything like that, but it's one of those things where. The part of the process is going to be forgetting something and it's just going to be uh, an exercise in acceptance almost that, you know, yeah. once you get out there, it's like, oh, man, I forgot the hat. I forgot my uh, my sunglasses right. or, you know, uh, you know some sunscreen or you know, something like that. Yeah, whatever yeah. it may be. And it's OK. You know, that's not going to ruin your day. 
Um, you know, it, now if you forgot, uh, you forgot your winch or you forgot your gas can or you forgot to fill up or, or something like that. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that might, that might, you know, put a little bit of a damper on things, but you know, ultimately, uh, no matter what you forget or, or what you're not exactly hundred percent prepared for, you're still going to have a good time. Uh, and yeah. you're still going to have fun. And that's what you went out there to do in the first place. So regardless of, of what your list looks like or what you didn't, you know, get or, or, or do, or, you know, how ill-prepared or unprepared you are or you think you are, get out there, have some fun. It's what it's all about. Well, and I think, too, when you're new to an organized run, you really don't know what the lay of the land is. You're not really sure. You're showing up. You think it's going to be fun. And I think it's nice that every run that I've ever done or have been a part of, there's always somebody out there welcoming you, um, making you feel comfortable, and just giving you the lay of the land, which is, hey, let me have you sign this waiver or you know, what's your experience level or have you done this run before or things like that. And I think that helps the new Jeeper to feel more confident about trying things if they just sort of have an idea of what to expect when they do sign up for that run. So, Well, I, I think that's one of the things that we really tried to focus in on, on this last run that we did. We wanted to have the new Jeepers out there. And, and, and it, it, is, it is very uh, trying whenever you're trying to go to a park you've never been before. Uh, and maybe maybe you've gone to parks before, but this is a new park. So what to expect? What trails are we going to be running? And the team just did a wonderful job, I think, at, uh, at making it easy for people to come out and feel comfortable. Josh did a great job at the driver's meeting. Uh, letting everybody know the things they needed to uh, be, uh, what they what they needed to do to be a success on the trail run, and the GMRS, especially the the Midland uh, handhelds that we handed uh-huh. out, were so handy for trail communications. I mean, trail communications was was wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. I, I probably did a riff for 15 minutes, so much so that the people on group one had to turn off their radios that were listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> to group to group two because we Josh and I were on group two. I love it. <laughs> hey, you know, Josh, we missed an opportunity to have the event attendees sign a pledge to become paid subscribers. What oh, you guys damn didn't it. do that? <laughs> Uh, see, I, you see. No matter you how many times them. you've been out on the trail, you still forget something. <laughs> forget right there, something. it is. Right there. And we it, had a and perfect it, opportunity to get those people to be paid subscribers. And, Darn it! And at least to put a little uh, asterisk on there. And uh, red is the best color for jeeps. Then I could have had multiple signed documents indicating proof that uh, everybody well, thought red jeeps the best. All <laughs> the we life, live, Tony. Thankfully, we live in a, in a modern society uh, of advanced technology, uh, and there's things called e-signing. So we can send out, you know, some DocuSign uh, type of stuff. We can yes. get some official uh, signatures and pledges. pledges. And it's not too yep. late, Tony. It's not too late. <laughs> yep, it could still be done. <laughs> oh, well, do you have a topic or suggestion for newbie nuggets? I would love to hear from you. You can also check out our YouTube tra- channel on Trails 411 with lots of different ideas, suggestions, and all kinds of techniques. Hey guys, it's Bob, two cheap cheap guys. I'm calling in to answer Tammy's question from Monday. The thing I forgot to take to Texas was my Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, and I survived by riding with other people. Barely made it, but I did survive. Oh no. <laughs> and on the list of things that I take in the Jeep, whether we go wheeling, camping, anything, is uh, isopropic alcohol, 91%. Uh, Use it to clean a scratch or scrape a cut, just to degrease something if you need to. Great as an accelerant for starting a fire when you're at camp. And if you get a big bug splat right in the middle of your window and you don't have any glass cleaner, a little bit of that on a paper towel or a napkin will break that bug guts up and get it off your windshield. All right, guys. Have a good day. So, Josh, did you see Bob in the back of uh, YJ Guys? Uh, YJ? Yeah, what? no, he was kind of hanging out in the back there for a little bit until I think the until things got a little too bumpy. and I, Until I he was slung that. out. <laughs> 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 yeah, that that great use for that uh, alcohol. You know, I ca- I can't remember if was Bob there last year. No, was he was no, this, this is a, different. I didn't. No, I didn't this think is the first so. time Bob's there. First time so I've ever the, met Bob. Yeah, first time for me too. I thought he was going to be a lot older than he really was. <laughs> uh oh. No, I mean just, just a. I, I had never seen him before. Right. Uh, I've only heard his voice before. Uh, so I didn't know what to expect, and 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 I and I thought that he was much older than he than he really is. No offense to Bob. Uh, Too it was late. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, 
<laughs> it's still, it's still old. Man. I'm not picking on him or anything like that. It was just the, uh, you know, I was, I was like, oh, okay. You know, you hear a voice and you expect that. It's like listening to the radio and you listen to a radio personality for, you know, two or three years. Oh, and yeah, like, that's what that guy looks like. Oh, and you go man. on, you know, and you look at it, it's like, that's not at all what I thought he would look right. like. There was also, a there was a guy on the CB back in the the late seventies, and he had such a booming voice. If he was a hundred pounds, I would have been surprised. He was, uh, you know, he was probably five ten, five eleven. He wasn't short, but just so skinny. And it was so funny meeting that guy. I was like, oh come on, that can't be you. And then you heard the voice. <laughs> See, yeah, that that that's what I get for judging a book by its voice. <laughs> exactly. All right, it's time for our giveaway, and uh, this is something that I've been very impressed with from when I first heard about it uh, when I interviewed Luke with, uh, and you guys correct me on this, is it Stein Jaeger or mm-hmm. Jaeger? There you go. Okay, Jaeger. good. I got it first Jaeger. right the first time. I got it first the right time. Uh, the Ace Engineering Lava Jacket, now manufactured by Stein Jaeger Incorporated, is a great accessory for chilly early morning trail rides or that late afternoon blistering Jeep uh, heat jeep excursions the ace nylon pullover jacket offers an uh, extra inner sleeve that easily connects to, with the provided vent clips to either the center uh, heating vents or the jt gladiator jl jk or tj jeep wrangler models the vent clip will attach to the center front vents for immediate coolness or warmth circulating ever so smoothly for immediate body temperature relief Ace Engineering also offers adapter vent clips. So, if you sell your JK and buy a JL, all you would have to do is purchase the related vent clip adapter for a JL. And your Ace Engineering Lava Jacket will continue to provide you comfort for many years to come. A Lava Jacket pricing ranges from $92 bucks up to $110 depending on the Jeep model and adapter vent clips uh, run around $20. Bucks. Find all details by searching Lava Jacket at the Ace Engineering website or search Ace Engineering Lava Jacket online to find qualified Steinjaeger Ace Engineering online retailers. All right, guys, you know how this works. Uh, we need to uh, figure out what caller number somebody has to be to be the winner. And uh, the, the phrase that pays, uh, Tammy, what, what color number should they be? And if you say 500, I'm driving over there. 11. 11. Oh, you and that 11 thing again. What is that? That, that number? Angel numbers? Or Angels. Something? Angel Those are her number, angel yeah. numbers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So caller number, of le- cover, 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 number 11. And uh, Josh, what is the phrase that pays? What is the phrase that everybody has to say uh, whenever they call in? Uh, and uh, hopefully they're caller number 11. All right, and you got to say it just like this, and you can't miss a word or uh, screw it up. Or add a word. <laughs> or add a word, any of that. That's That would be under the uh, screw it up uh, umbrella there. Here you go. Keep it cool with a lava jacket. The phrase that pays, keep it cool with a lava jacket. You must be 18 years of age or older. Your mailing address must be in the continental United States. You may only call in once per giveaway. Any required word or phrase must be said exactly and completely the first time. Your call must include your caller ID. One chance to win per individual per giveaway. All these rules must be followed unless otherwise stated. Failure to follow these rules will disqualify you from being eligible for the giveaway. We will contact you with a text message at the number you called from. Good luck, Jeeper. All right, so caller number 11, the phrase that pays, keep it cool with a lava jacket. And you get a ace. What used to be an ace engineering lava jacket. That's what I think what most people know it by. And uh, now it's a a Steinjaeger uh, incorporated lava jacket. I'm really interested in seeing one of these things. So I'm hoping that whoever wins this will uh, share uh, it being hooked up and used. And you know, I, I got this this vision of a Michelin man driving a jeep around. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some pictures of of some rather well, you know those like uh, those sumo uh, wrestler yes. uh, inflatable outfits. That yes. you, that you, imagine that, but on the top half. Oh, there but you. you're but you're so warm or cool, and you know that would be a twenty four seven cool device down here in Southeast Texas. Well, you look you learned that your first hand, Josh. Oh sure, yeah, I learned that last year and this year. <laughs> Gladiator. My name is Gladiator. Gladiators. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? This is not why you are here. Gladiator. I'm going to talk about the second annual Jeep Talk Show off-road event. And Josh, jump in here because, you know, you, you oh, were in attendance. Course. And uh, uh, Tammy, Wendy, of course, you guys jump in as you as you would like. Uh, I want to thank Chuck and his wife, Mary Lee, Wayne and Angela from RM Cattle. 
As promised, we had, from RM Cattle, T-Bone Steaks, breakfast with bacon, eggs, biscuits, and gravy. I want some mm-hmm. now, damn it. Uh, and, and a lot more stuff. That's just what I ate. I don't know if you guys got anything. There was, <laughs> there was one minor injury, but I tell people to keep their hands away from me while I'm, while I'm feeding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then we had a great meal, a brisket with all the fixings. Thanks, oh. thanks to John Lee for cooking the brisket. Oh. Actually, yeah. I think I think he actually bought the brisket as well. I think he picked that up. So uh, I, I don't care. I don't care if it was pulled off the side of the road. That road was kill. a <laughs> brisket. I, Texas seriously. roadkill gets a bad rap, but it's uh, if if you wrap it it's during good. barbecuing, it turns out pretty good. <laughs> so how was that food for you, Josh? You love uh, food, and uh, you know Chuck apologized to me because instead of handmade biscuits. Uh, he just got picked those up at a, a local store. Oh, there was no oh apolo- my God. apologize for that. I, mean, no, I know, no. I know. We, it was, we all ate like kings for an off road yeah. event. Uh, right. seriously. Wow. And seriously, it was it was all thanks to to Mary Lee uh, and Angela, and of course Wayne and Chuck uh, went in there. You know, had a little bit to do with it as well. John babysat that smoker oh, for yeah. it seemed like a day and a half. Wow, <laughs> I mean, it was just incredible. I just um, wanted him to walk away so I could uh, carve some off while while he wasn't watching. <laughs> when Tony said all the fixins, I mean he ain't joking either. Uh, there was this pasta salad there that I think I probably ate a gallon's worth at least uh, out of out of that bin. I mean it was it was so dang good. Uh, they had uh, somebody brought out brownies at the end of the night too, oh, like with, twice with <laughs> pecans and without. Fudge and, and stuff. I mean, it was just oh, it was bananas. There's so so much. I good missed food the bananas. There. I didn't see those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, what I really liked uh, was the, the that coffee in the morning. Uh, yes. They had you know multiple coffee pots put out. At least I mean, five wow. big coffee containers. Oh my it was gosh. incredible, and I, I needed that coffee too. And and so uh, you know, it was right there. If, if they hadn't had it, I there was uh, there was a plan B, um, so it w- it wasn't a big deal. But uh, the fact that it was there and it was hot and it was good, it was strong. I was just like, oh, thank you. This isn't Folgers. This is awesome. Yeah, it was good. Well, you know, Cattle Ranch. It's gonna they're gonna have to have good coffee, or somebody's gonna die. So Absolutely, they know. And uh, I'll I'll mention this because when we first got there on Saturday morning. Uh, back to where uh, Chuck's uh, camp was, where he was uh, renting one of the zip zip houses. Uh, he was there in front of the big ass griddle that he brought down. He and Mary Lee and Wayne and Angela brought down uh, from Kansas, uh, either on the eighteen wheeler or in the 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 fifth wheel. They were they were pulling behind the the ram. I mean, this was a big deal. I mean, this, oh, yeah. this was an entourage that was out there with with Chuck and Mary Lee. Anyway, Chuck was standing there cooking. So he was in front of that big grill, and I know he cooked the bacon. I suspect he fixed most of the breakfast stuff, and he may have been involved in the other thing. So this wasn't Chuck uh, sitting back uh, having a beer at 8 o'clock in the morning and watching Mary Lee do the work. Now, Mary Lee did plenty of work. There was so much work to be done, and I told Chuck long before we're going to have the brisket Everybody, no, there's not going to be, we're not catering any of this stuff. And of course, Chuck listened like he, like he listens to Merrily, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is. Shut up, Tony. I'm doing whatever the hell I want. <laughs> exactly. Just nods. I'm a grown ass man. Yeah, just nods exactly. and does whatever he wants to do. So, I mean, it was wonderful. Uh, wow. Josh, it gave Josh and I a chance to not only eat food, but mix with the people that were there, talk to them, get pictures. So it was it was wonderful. You, I, you just can't do stuff like this without a team. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, Chuck, uh, Mary Lee, Wayne, and Angela were so important to the to the aspect of having this thing go so so easily, so seamlessly. A hundred percent. Without them, without their generosity and, and hospitality, really, that's what it came down to, uh-huh. the hospitality and generosity, a hundred percent, it wouldn't have been the event that it was. And I think this left an impression with a lot of people uh, that were, were unlike any other event that they've ever attended. Uh, so again, yeah, hats off to the whole RM Cattle uh, team for you guys just going above and beyond uh, for helping us out and for helping out all of our listeners who showed up to the event. Uh, you guys did an amazing and just stellar job. Thank you so much. And, and well, it's it was, like a big family. It was. Yeah. And exactly. and that's exactly the reason why. And Chuck told me this. It, that's exactly the reason why he did this because it was it was something that he lived as a kid out on the Rubicon Trail with his family. 
Well, and, and we got to see that family out on the Rubicon Trail. He brought this DVD that had like some uh, eight millimeter footage from back in the late fifties, early wow. sixties. It, it wasn't of, some; it was two hours worth of oh, eight millimeter. Yeah, it footage. went on for. I mean, yeah, Chuck's it was home great. Movies. Yes, I like it, was, it. It was awesome seeing these, you know, little CJs out there bouncing around on the trail, no seatbelts, decades before anything aftermarket, and this right. was his family. You know, wow. grandpa grandfathers and grandmothers and great uncle uh, uncles and aunts you know that sort of stuff i mean they were some of the pioneers of the trail back in the day building bridges out there and stuff like that i mean huge i mean big piece of history not to mention you know on a, on a jeep scale just national scale but also from a family scale and we got to see you know really get to see his background and so having this this sort of aspect of this familyness playing in the background being a part of of a one you know big facet of this entire event really helped give it that family atmosphere that i mean i've been to lots of jeep events over the years and lots of wheeling trips and weekend wheeling trips you know multiple day trips things like that never in all of the years that i've been on the trails have i ever been to an event that had that kind of a homey feel to it and it was all because of, of chuck and his family wow. uh, josh you may remember this we it was the evening that we were wheeling and i went to a, a, a new part of the park i think you guys went to it uh, on the first event uh, and i didn't uh, FMTRO, yeah, FMTRO yeah. trail, yeah, and uh, it was uh, the day. The day wasn't super hot, so I'll, I'll give a little something to John Lee about it not being super hot. It wasn't. It was warm, but I remember being out there late in the evening. So it's you know dusk is coming. It's a little cooler in the day. There's a breeze. Uh, we have the windows down on the Gladiator, and I, I just remember had that feeling. I'm I'm surrounded by people that are Jeep Talk Show listeners. It's the cool of the evening. I'm well fed. This is just a very fun, um, satisfying Pleasant. feeling. Yes. <laughs> just it was just so natural and nice. And and well, going going down that uh, that trail that was like reminiscent of the the uh, the trough on the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I was like, that. I was like, Luke Skywalker, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of a lot bumpier. But anyway, uh, it, it was just it just felt perfect, and it was just so nice being there. Yeah, right, right about dusk, as as the sun started to set on that run, we had a uh, a Cherokee that had a, a blowout tire. Um, I guess there was a little bit of dry rot on one of his tires. A lot of dry okay. rot. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the the difficulty of this run really put that sidewall to test, and he ended up splitting that sidewall from rim to to, to tread. Wow! And, yeah, I mean, it was it was make a decision. What do we do? Is there anybody here that has the same bolt pattern and tire size? And sure enough, one Jeep out of like well, it have to well, be a, have to be a TJ uh, for it to be the right yeah, size. and 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 a dude was there. He had the right rim, and the hat just so happened to be the right size tire, even because the guy had a um, a traction device in the in the axle. Um, and so it, and it worked out. Uh, worked out one hundred percent. However, in unloading that tire, I think uh, somebody had parked on a uh, ant hill or something. So Ooh. there was a few ant bites that Oops. that happened. Yeah, we we're unloading this tire, and all of a sudden the ground is moving, and it's like, oh, oh no, <laughs> get out of here, help me. So, uh, but no, and, I mean Jeepers jumped into action. Uh, 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 Jimmy uh, got this bottle jack out of freaking nowhere that was just perfect for. I mean, I mean, if it had been an inch shorter, an inch longer, it may not have worked. Um, but we got the Jeep up, got that, that tire swapped out in no time, got him back to camp and, and, and all that. I mean, it was just like, yeah, you, you're right, Tony. It was the, the cool um, evening air. The sun is going down, you know, nice, you know, temperatures and stuff. Great group of people. We're all fed. We're all full. We're all happy. You know, we, we had this little bit of a uh, carnage incident happen, but it was no big deal. Jump into action and we're back on the trail in just moments. And, and it's Jeepers coming together. You know, like any other time, I've been on the trail, you know, hundreds of times, and with with stuff stuff that goes wrong, and Jeepers jump into action. There was probably a half a dozen different states represented at this event. Oh yeah, we had where, we had people coming care. in from all over. Louisiana, uh, Larry came down from Missouri, Chuck, Kansas. So it was just wonderful. Yeah. So I mean, uh, all these different points of the U.S., these Jeepers come together like they do from anywhere, and I, that's why I keep saying it's like Jeepers are cut from a different kind of cloth. And I don't care where you're from, who you're jeeping with, Jeepers are Jeepers the nation round. Yeah, it really is. We're fiercely loyal to the brand. That's very. 
Yep. Well, also, to each other and to each other as well. It's one big family, right. and that, that's what I was getting at. It's like this family atmosphere. We all just sort of help each other out, and and that's what it was. And it was it was just it was really really quite nice. And, and I don't want to gloss over the old jeeps that were out there because uh, what year is that Scrambler? Is it eighty one that Chuck has? Somewhere around there, okay, eighties, early early eighties. Okay, and uh, so there was a Chuck had his Scrambler there. Uh, his uh, son had his uh, forty six uh, flat fender. Uh, out there wow. that he was wheeling and uh it, it was it i don't think you see that a lot uh, at events because uh, if you have one of those things you don't generally drag it 13 hours to an event and then take it out and wheel it i mean jeepers do but generally speaking you don't see that and we had that and okay. we also had last year uh our our big very enthusiastic off-roader Guy and his YJ, the, that was the gentleman that uh, rolled his YJ over it on its slop. side. It was yeah. just a sort of a, yeah, it just had to go lay down. Well, this is clickbait, Josh. So he, he rolled it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Gotta listen. Gotta figure out what happened last year. So, so Guy was out there and he had almost no issues on the trail, but that was because his YJ was broken most of the time oh, no. and couldn't, he oh. couldn't take it out. It was actually that Saturday evening that he got to take the YJ out and uh, take it off the trail. Josh yes. was, uh, was uh, vaping uh, uh, fuel f- fumes off that thing, trying to fix it. <laughs> we, we, we spent quite a number of hours Friday night uh, and a, a good uh, amount of, uh, of time Saturday day uh, at, at some point uh, getting him fixed up. It was all hands on deck. I think uh, at least at least four or five different people were turning wrenches on that, including myself uh, at one point. And and I, was, so- I was standing there pointing and going, well, there's your problem. <laughs> Dad, did you guys think about this? Did and, you try that? Like, it yeah, really, yeah, it really yeah. seemed There's to be There's always one in yeah, every group. Yeah, and it's going to be me. Uh, <laughs> it, it really seemed like an electrical issue. The, it would run, and then somebody would slam the hood down, and it would stop. It would stop running. Push, push on the bumper, yeah, and it would push stop running. I mean, it was so, <laughs> so weird. I've never, ever in my life experienced such a an odd situation where uh, it would it would create a no run situation by pushing down on the bumper. But what? what was the, yeah. What was the yeah, problem? Yeah. So. There you go, Tammy got it. Uh, ultimately, fuel leak, wasn't it? yeah, it was. It was the fuel leak is is what ultimately did him in, and it was because no uh, it was TBI, throttle body injection. So we had a single, uh, you know, injector at the throttle body, and that one fuel line into the throttle body and one fuel line out. Uh, it was the inlet, uh, the the uh, input line that had just, I mean, a pinhole leak to wow. it. Wow. And wow. it was what does just the enough have to do with that. Just an, well, and so Change when you push down the, on the bumper, the it, it would it would it would twist the Jeep just enough. I mean, we're talking about fractions of a degree here, but it was just enough to put a little bit of a strain on the fuel line to make it move huh. just slightly enough to create that leak to reduce the pressure at the TBI at, at the at the throttle body enough to where it would kill the Jeep. Mm-hmm. It was that finicky. You that, know, that just a, a drop in PSI by, I don't know how what kind of percent, we're probably talking fractions of a PSI here, but it was enough. Yeah, you know, I just dawned on me, uh, Larry had a 12-volt or a 24-volt welder. We could have tack welded that, uh, that fuel line. Oh, what well, could possibly have gone <laughs> Oh, there you go. We may have to have a have to have a disclaimer, <laughs> but yeah. but it would have been the it would not necessarily fixed, but we would have been done working on it. Well, <laughs> sure, and, <laughs> and you would have had you know marshmallows roasted and whatever else bring them out. <laughs> Jeez, oh, good times, good times. Oh, and I, that, that reminds me, Larry brought a beautiful red trail vise that goes into oh, a two inch oh, receiver. I and, saw the video of that, that and awesome. and I was <laughs> sucking wind, hold, trying to hold that thing up with one arm. Because I wanted to hand it that to was, the winner. I was stout. Yeah, no, his that, his design is is pure B. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved I mean, there's, it. There's, that's going to last a lifetime. That's going to last multiple lifetimes. He'll be giving that to his yeah. grandkids. So I'll, yeah. I'll, just, I'll just mention, Larry came with two trail vices that he had built, and he left with zero. So Uh-oh. not only was there a giveaway for the Jeep Talk Show, uh, he left uh, the other one that he was carrying on his Jeep for his use. Uh, with somebody else from the event for for uh, testing, and I think it'll get well tested. Oh, that's oh yeah, cool. oh, absolutely. It was a lot of fun, uh, and so, uh, and hopefully we'll be talking more about this on our next uh, roundtable event uh, with our our Zoom people. We have many of the Zoom people were at the event, and if you were at the event and you don't know about our our Zoom meeting that we record on uh, Tuesday night, the roundtable episode, uh, go over and check out uh, JeepTalkShow dot com slash contact. 
and uh, subscribe to our newsletter or uh, or join the Discord so that you'll know when this thing's coming up. We'd love to have uh, your comments uh, on that show where we talk about the Oh, I got uh, some event. great comments when I popped in this last Tuesday. I, I, I was I, pretty much signing out right as you were about signing in, Tony. It was just uh, we had about a two-minute overlap there, I think. Uh, but yeah, I was like, oh, the celebrities in the house, you know, and I, got, I got some, uh, I, I got a little bit of grief for, uh, for a, a bad spot that I, that I was a, a part of. And, uh, I'll have to, I have to tell a story about that around the campfire one day, Wendy, I'll be a, a very interesting about your input on that. I'd love to hear it, but I was curious how many Jeeps you guys actually ended up having. I didn't, I didn't hear that, the quantity of who showed up. 20, 27. We had, uh, <gasps> wow, that's yeah, awesome. We had uh, 25 and then, uh, one joined us. Uh, that was the 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 uh, um, private uh, drivers meeting that you had, Josh, with the the couple in the white jeep. Oh, that's right. They yeah, the black, they asked if jeep. yeah yeah white. There was no, another, it was white. Another one. It, it was a white jeep. Well, there was another couple that had that came on the uh, evening run, or I think they were going to come on the evening run with a with a white jeep, or maybe they joined us on the. No, there was that, like that was the morning. That was the one that you did. The I, I saw the the picture I took, so I I can remember it easier since I've seen it since then. But and then there was another one that just uh, kind of got into the trail, said, "Hey, can we join you guys while they right. were on the trail?" Yeah. And I don't know if that was group one or group two. So yeah, we had uh, exactly thirteen and a half jeeps on in each group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Split it like 50 that. 50. The plan That's was awesome. 10 uh, per, per group. And I, I actually Seriously. asked John and Bill, who did a wonderful job planning out the trail, uh, and, and multiple trips out there uh, and, uh, yeah. and, and planning out the trail. And John actually did the trail lead for uh, what was it? He was on group one. He was it? on group one. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, it, like I said, it was a team effort. And, and I, nice. I thought it went very well. It could always be better. And we're going to work through that for the next one. And uh, I'm also uh, talking uh, to the team about having uh, more off-road events. Of course, it, they won't be anything like the annual one. But just going out there, uh, meeting up and... Uh, Meetups, yeah. Yeah, getting out all, off, off the road, saying, uh, I mean, yeah, getting off, off road on the trails and just having fun. I have some ideas for... Um something here in Southern California in October. That'd be great. Uh, that's another so, thing I'd like to do is, uh, it, I know that's difficult uh, for a lot of people, uh, a, lot, a lot of you hosts, especially you, Tammy, but... Uh, yeah, the cornfields are not fun. Right. Well, I mean, there's something, and, and well, I love the run, idea. You can't run through them backwards. That's the problem. <laughs> right. Well, you can. No, there are but actually places up here on the Iron Range and stuff. <laughs> well, that us I need to uh, go check out us being across the entire country gives us a great opportunity to ha- uh, have local listeners or local or more local uh, than not listeners show up for events. So I love the idea yeah. of having multiple Jeep talk show events. It doesn't have to be the one I'm at or Josh is at. It can be the one where uh, well, Tammy's at or where, where Wendy is at. Glad you mentioned that because you you had shared some stats on the Discord uh, here recently, um, and somebody mentioned, "Wow, look at the number of listeners that are in Oregon." Right? Uh, they no, were kind of wow. surprised. And I, I was honestly too because I swear to God, like three weeks ago, we had like eight, and <laughs> now there's like thousands. And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, where did all these Oregon listeners come from? Because I mean, for for a long time, and honestly, I'm not I'm not uh, a stickler for the numbers. I, I don't I don't I don't follow them quite as much. Tony's all over the metrics for the show and, and follows that stuff way more religiously than I do. Um, but nonetheless, I was, I was way surprised to see the number of listeners out of Oregon. Uh, so I'm, I'm seriously giving some uh, consideration to uh, trying an Oregon uh, uh, event again. Yeah, well, the should. last one fell so flat, I was embarrassed. I was like, well, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> Screw that. No, yeah. no, no. That, you have to just do it. And, and, and when you do it the first time, it may not work. You try it again, and it's, it's that rep- repetitive stuff. I mean, who wants to go out for something that they well, don't know how good it's going to be? They don't know if you're really going to show yeah, up. I, I mean, seven or eight years ago, we were a lot different of a show. Yeah, back that's true. Then, but, <laughs> well, yeah. well, you got to get that Jeep going because right now you have nothing yeah. to take off road. I know. You got to get it moving. Hey, this is Nick from Texas calling. We had a great time at the second annual Jeep Top Show Hidden Falls Valley event. <laughs> I want to thank the sponsors for free swag and support of the event, Midland Radio and Nexon Tires. A big thank you to Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Tammy in spirit. And I also want to thank John, the trail leader, Chuck, and all the people from Kansas for the food and, and the camp and others that helped uh, this was to make this event great. Thanks for a great event again, guys. Yeah, and uh, I believe this is this is correct. 
Uh, Nick was the one that actually won the drawing for the uh, trail vice from uh, Jeeping Mo, uh, oh. Larry Jeeping Mo. I believe that, I that's believe that's cool. the right. I believe that's the right guy. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and I'm here at the second annual Jeep Talk Show Hidden Falls Adventure Event thingy. Uh, <laughs> this lost interest. I guess I'm really early because nobody's here. I don't think Tony would have gave me the wrong date. Would he? <laughs> well, I got some time to kill. I might as well uh, entertain myself with a joke. Why did the chicken cross the road? And you knew this was coming. Because there was a KFC on the on his side of the road. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it asks the age-old question. If I tell a joke and no one laughs, is it still funny? I mean, nope. hell right, it's still funny. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> So uh, this uh, this week when we got the uh, the funnies uh, from uh, from Nikki G, you know the stuff that we play here on the show, I I said uh, you know I didn't think about it. Uh, I just assumed uh, it was too far to go. But I thought you know if Josh can fly in, Nikki G can fly in for one of these events, and we could actually you know pick him up at the uh, at the Austin airport like we do. Uh, I mean that's what Bob did, and that's what Josh did. And I thought uh, that would be, you know, I was like, would you be interested he, he in... He works at an airport. He should be able to fly well, for... That's be no I, I was yeah. thinking that, too, when I when I mentioned it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he's on a no-fly list still, but nonetheless. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, so I said, hey, you know, next time we have one of these events, do you want me to make sure to uh, check with you and see if you're interested in coming out because <laughs> to it, invite you <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to I mean if you're like most people you don't want to say hey I'm, I'm going to fly into Austin pick me up you, you'd like to be invited so that you don't feel yeah, so bad it's about Nikki it Nikki G I mean you know it's it's almost no invite necessary Nikki well, G no, don't you and, ever and, show up to my house uninvited <laughs> and, and that's the that's the point is that I just I just dawned on me I had never you know uh, thought of him coming out because he's so far away and he's got a Cherokee <laughs> I know, I know the pain there. So anyway, yeah, he's he's interested in doing that, and I said that's great. Well, I'll make sure I let you know, and uh, make sure you bring a joke book because you know people are going to want jokes while you're there. <laughs> he can't reveal his sources. Uh, brown brown paper wrapper is there. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Hey Josh, this is Matt over here at the House of Gong. Just wanted to let you know that your 12 inch is back ordered, but. Since you know your way around Gong, I will go ahead and up your order to a 15 inch and get it right out to you with no extra cost. I know you're going to love it. Yes! Be powder coated black for free. Once you see the way this deluxe model swings once you smack it, <gasps> you'll never go back. Now, I know being a famous guy, you can get any kind of Gong you want, but I'm <laughs> proud that you chose ours. So, thanks a lot. Be seeing you. That is hilarious. All right, uh, Josh, after your two shenanigans from the first uh, Jeep Talk Show event and this most recent uh, talk, uh, uh, Jeep Talk Show event, I want you to know, I, I don't know how I'm going to order it because Amazon's going to flag me, but I'm going to order a 15-inch gong <laughs> and Thank put you. it in your bed. <laughs> this sounds like TMI, Tammy. What do you think? Yeah, I know. I'm like, like, where are we going here? They're already in the same room. Are they sleeping together? Oh. What's happening here? Now they're putting stuff in each other's bed. I don't understand. What's two happening? men, no. two heterosexual men can spoon and it's okay. Yeah, with a gong. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, it's, instead of a safe word, you have a safe gong. <laughs> All right, so coming up this uh, next Thursday, it's the big one, folks. It's the one that many of you been a- had asked for, and uh, thanks to Chris over at sevenslats.com, we got it. Matt yeah. from Matt, uh, Matt's Off-Road Recovery. Can't wait. Very interesting interview. I think you guys are going to really, really enjoy it. And then uh, two weeks from that Thursday, we'll be talking to Cody Cameron from BridgeCom Systems, a great place to buy uh, ham radios, GMRS, uh, pretty much uh, anything that you would like. So uh, we'll uh, you get more information about uh, BridgeCom Systems in that interview. You must have needed this every day. I need it. It's the Jeep Talk Show's must-have stuff, pick of the week for your Jeep. Now, I gave this company who makes this product my seal of approval back on episode 428 when I showcased their original grab bars. They were just 86 bucks then, and they're still the same price today, despite all the economic turmoil. But that's not why I'm calling! 
On this episode, I'm highlighting their foot pegs, or as Grab Bar, the company who makes them, calls them, boot bars. They are easy to install foot pegs that provide a comfortable place to rest your foot outside of your Wrangler. And if you've never felt the wind between your toes at highway speeds, well, <laughs> you're missing out. Designed for style and comfort, these black foot rests install directly onto your lower hinge for full open air comfort. These Wrangler boot, uh, boot bars are, they feature a rugged, durable construction and are coated in a thick, impervious black powder coat to prevent corrosion and wear. They're designed to swivel in when not in use and lock out when they are and are available for CJs on up. They're uh, equipped with dual layer rubber grips that come in one of seven different colors, including purple, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Rubberized in specific places to ensure that the paint on your hinges stay protected. They come with an easy-to-use storage bag with a handle for quick storage and access when you're ready to roll. Installation takes about five minutes on average and requires no drilling or modifications of any kind. That said, though, I will say this, and this is just coming from me. This is strictly my opinion here. I think the included hardware comes with nylock nuts, which are great, but that means it's intended to be put on for a period of time and not taken off and put back on repeatedly. I may opt to make a slight modification if I were to have a set of these for myself, which would more than likely void the warranty, but with a drill press, make a small hole through the lower protruding threads that could accommodate a cotter pin, and bam, quick disconnect boot bars. Ooh, that just rolls off the tongue, doesn't like it? That. Somebody yeah. get I on like that. I like it. I know. I want 10%. For now, sure. I like, I like these specific ones because they are simple in design. They are very well built, and the best part, well, they They're come purple. with a life Time warranty, Tammy. Lifetime warranty. The MSRP is sixty-six bucks. Grab Bar wow. has them on their site, starting at sixty dollars. Extreme Terrain, Morris four x four, four wheel parts. Pretty much all the big retailers all sell them for sixty dollars. Well, fifty-nine ninety-five. If you want to quibble about a nickel, but I did the work for you, and I found the best deal—a whole fifteen bucks cheaper at Quadratech of all places. I know, I know. <laughs> I don't have anything against Quadratech <laughs> at all, honestly. I think you but, got some preconceived notions there, Josh. <laughs> but they do oftentimes have a higher price on things than other places. That, that's kind of a bit of a reputation they have. Great selection, great service, a little bit higher of a price. The link we have is specifically for the uh, 2007 to 2018 JKs, but they do make them for virtually every single Jeep. Like I said, CJ's on up. So if you want a set of foot pegs for when you go doorless, you, that look cool, they're, they're only $45 and are built to last a lifetime, well, click the link in the show notes for this episode at JeepTalkShow.com. We'll get you all hooked up. I think we, amazing. I think we know that Jeep activities are generally dangerous anyway, So, uh, but this isn't a big thing to, to, to I, I guess it won't come as a big shock, but driving with your leg hanging out of your, your Jeep on, at highway speeds is potentially dangerous. So keep this in mind whenever you got it stuck on one of those pegs. And I, and I, I think if you can use both pegs with uh, both legs, then that's that would be a good show. Oh, good Lord. How tall are you? What is your <laughs> inseam? Good God. <laughs> at that point, you're just using your hands to push the Jeep along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's time to announce the, the winner that uh, Wendy wouldn't let me do last week. So. Oh, you're oh, yeah. on me, Wendy. <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, I was really busy getting uh, ready for the uh, the off road event, so uh, I did not have time to uh, wade through the many calls that we got for the uh, the Nixon tires. So, uh, well, I'll just let you uh, hear the person on the phone that uh, that won this. Hello. Hey, Mike. This is Tony with the Jeep Talk Show. Hey, Tony. What's up? All right, Mike, got some great news for you. You are the winner of the Nexon Tire Rodian MTX. Uh, and uh, I just want to know, uh, don't you already have a set? Are you, you're going to donate these to somebody else, right? Oh, hell no. I'll keep you. Uh, I do have a set right now. Um, definitely going to hold on to them until I'm ready to use them. So you, do, so you do have the Rodian MTXs currently, right? Yeah, I do have them currently, so I know the, the well quality of these tires. Uh, I fell in love with them as soon as I, you know, tested them out. And uh, I don't think I will change to any other tire because uh, next tire is the tire of the, the public. Yeah, you know, I bring them down to maybe like 14 PSI, maybe 15 PSI, and the grip is amazing on it. Well, Mike, thank you very much for being a, a longtime show listener and a winner of the Nixon Rodian MTX tires at NixonTireUSA.com. Uh, yeah, and thank you, Jeep Talk Show, for, for, uh, for everything. And uh, Nixon Tires, thanks again for sponsoring uh, uh, Jeep Talk Show. 
And I guess I have to uh, keep my promise because I said if I won the uh, Nixon Tires, I was no longer going to be a rat bastard. So I guess it'll be the, uh, <laughs> yeah. being no, no longer a rat bastard. <laughs> I forgot all about that, but I'm sure somebody would have reminded you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, thanks a lot. So, uh, so, so Mike was very happy. Awesome. And, and I'm yeah. going to remind him. I'm going to text him and say, Mike, rat bastard, what's happening? Let's go. <laughs> so <laughs> Tony will get notification. I, I, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm really happy, especially a longtime show listener, uh, won these tires. Uh, but I was a little disappointed that he already had the Nexons. But it was a, it, it was it, it just shows you that people that have them are excited yes. about getting them. them. And just we like Tammy, them. you know, Tammy's had two sets. Uh, I don't know how you went through two sets, Tammy. I, oh, I I didn't. She I got wheels. two sets. Yeah. One was for my Jeep, and one was for Maggie May. Oh, okay. So that makes more sense. I, I was just really surprised yep. when you had said uh, two sets earlier. Uh, but uh, yeah, great tires. I am so happy I got them. If you're if you're worried about trying another brand no, tire, need, don't. don't. Just go for it. And, and yeah. listen, I just want to say about Mike Zen, he was one of our first infectious agents. That's right. Who was, right. Who was yeah. pushing around the rat bastards, the, the little toe tags that we have oh, with the little rats on damn them. Damn it. I forgot to grab a couple of those from you, Tony, when I was down yeah. there. I should, my uh, my wife wasn't happy when I got home, and I said, so I guess it was the heat. The rat started falling off the toe tags. I knew it. I should have done more glue testing. <laughs> <laughs> she worked so hard on those things. But Andrew did. Uh, he, found, he found enough to tag several of the Jeeps at the event. The park Good. wasn't that busy. Uh, the only thing we could have done was thrown them at uh, uh, wild uh, side-by-side drivers. Uh, Josh knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yep, we got that video up on uh, up somewhere as well. I don't think I want to share that with public. I don't. Oh, okay. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they, they got they got in trouble under their own. Yeah, but, they did. Uh, that's I, a story I for around the campfire. I will leave it leave it the way it is. But yeah, I'll still re- refer to it. But no video evidence. <laughs> well, congratulations, Mike Zen, winner of yes. our next entire giveaway. Uh, obviously, uh, a former next entire winner, or uh, I should say, owner. Uh, paid for them, not be, a winner. Paid yeah, for no, them. <laughs> yeah, paid for them. I, I think he's going to be a lifelong next entire user. I think so too. Well, hey Jeeper, if you want to hear stories about you know, well, all kinds of stuff, what's happening in Jeeps, and uh, well, talk about uh, you know some people winning stuff and having a chance to win some stuff of your own, you got to check out our other episodes as well. The Jeep Talk Show has four episodes a week now, and we record one live every Tuesday that you can be a part of. You want to be a part of the next Jeep Talk Show? Head over to jeeptalkshow.com and, well, you can find out all kinds of ways to reach out to us and join in on the fun. Every Tuesday, roundtable episodes. Come be a part of the fun. Hey, Josh, I I forgot to mention this. I don't think any of you guys have heard this. I've been receiving threats on the Jeep Talk Show uh, phone system here and leaving a voicemail. I'm pretty sure sure it's from another Jeep podcast. They're Uh telling me that sure is a nice gladiator. It'd be a, uh, it'd be a shame if something happened to it if you didn't stop doing the giveaways. So what? yeah, so I think that uh, the the giveaways are making a big thing with a lot of our listeners and uh, other podcasters aren't liking it. Really? Mm-hmm. Are you, you need to tell Cody those? to butt you know <laughs> fuck up? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, or even if there's any. Uh, truth was it you? Because you, you seem no. you're see, acting kind of shady, Josh. Was that you? No, I'm, oh, not at all. Not at all. I, you got caller ID on that on that thing. So, no, uh, uh, no. I just I figured this would be something that uh, I, I could see Cody doing in, in fun, either Cody or Nikki G, but uh, mm-hmm. or Travis. <laughs> Travis, Travis doesn't I would have recognize. a podcast. Travis doesn't have a podcast. Well, but. I understand, but he could do it for fun because he's a no, fun this guy. This is true. This is true, and I, I I could see him doing that kind of stuff for fun. Well, I have some Jeep fun facts I want to start sharing, if that's okay. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I want to tell people where they can go to get oh. all kinds of great information about what's happening on the show, Tammy. Real quick, before uh, we get into uh, a little bit of fun facts, if you guys want to join in on the fun, uh, actually interact with the show, actually reach out to us. You got something to say? You got something you want to hear on a on one of our segments like Tech Talk or or uh, Newbie Nuggets or something like that? By all means, reach out to us. Go to Jeep Talk Show dot com slash contact really easy that's the only link you ever need to remember jeeptalkshow.com slash contact you're going to find out all kinds of different ways to uh, interact with us and you're going to find a link to click and sign up for our newsletter which gives you that inside information about what's happening what's coming up who we're interviewing and what we're giving away and when okay some fun facts about jeeps 
In the small town of Eureka, Utah in 1901, there was a man named Frank Zamboni. He grew up to be the creator of one of the most iconic service vehicles ever built, the ice resurfacing machine called the Zamboni. You see these cool machines at hockey games. They resurface the ice between the periods of the hockey games. Yes, I know, this is a Jeep podcast, and I'm going to get to that. Patience, people. So Frank needed his ice resurfacing machine to be more mobile to get the resurfacing down from 90 minutes, can you imagine, to 10 minutes. Wow. And in 1949, he did just that by using a war surplus, you guessed it, Jeep, the Willys MB, then later the CJ3B and the CJ5. There's a link in the show notes with more information on this cool Jeep fun fact. That was good. I like that. Very interesting. Howard Zamboni. Hmm. Put a blower on it, V8, some exhaust. <laughs> we'll get this thing done in five you know, minutes. It's got to be go. geared really low. Five, so I'm two, thinking it's a, go. and it's got the right shape. It's just a big, big box. So it, yeah. it, it, that's very Jeepy. <laughs> True. Well, Jeep, it looks like this episode of the Jeep Talk Show has come to the end of the trail, but we've got another episode coming up right around the corner. Until then, wait, when was the last time you told somebody about the Jeep Talk Show? You're not doing that every week? Come on, tell a friend or a stranger. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes! Podcasting since 2010.